Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. A special good evening to my Agape family. Those here with me, right here, so close, and those online, we bless you and we welcome you today. Thank you for being with us. Grateful we are. Mm -hmm. I say that again. Grateful we are that God has brought us to this final day of 2020 in the midst of all that has taken place. It was David, the servant of the Lord and the director of music in mm -hmm. Psalm 18 who sang these words to the Lord when he was delivered from the hands of the enemy and from the hand of Saul. I love you Lord my strength and like David today Hello, like David today, we can testify this evening that the Lord's our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm, secure whatever ill be time, a still a shelter in the time of storm. He's a shade by day, a defense by night, still a shelter in the time of storm. Oh Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is the rock. Jesus is my rock. Hallelujah. 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 Songs like these were written all in the early centuries. So these songs are very prophetic, if I may say. So this evening, let us stay the course. Now, I always say this, so you know where I'm coming from. Let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So now with hands lifted up and a voice filled with praise, let us pray. Could you stand with me at this time? Oh, tonight it is with a heart of gratitude we come. Oh, saints, tonight we lift our voice and our hearts and we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you to the Most High God. Oh, you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. You are El Gibor. You are the mighty God. You are Lord our God. You are Jesus. You are the Son of the Most High God. And we give you thanks tonight. Oh, Lord God, you have brought us up to see this point where it is the last hours of the year 2020 our final service Lord and we come with all the thanks all the praise all the strength to declare you are God you are Lord our God 
Father. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. And we thank you. We, we ask, Lord God, that your presence be manifest with us this evening in this our service. We ask that your Holy Spirit be reigning here, present here, to anoint, to touch, to heal, to strengthen your Holy Spirit, Lord. God himself is with us and we shout thank you. We say adoration. We thank you for every promise that you have kept in this year 2020 that we can stand here now and lift our voice and say Lord you are God we look to the rock from which we are hewn and we say thank you Lord oh we thank you for your promise we thank you Lord for, for Isaiah 37 where you said Lord God you will defend us no shield ramp will be built against us and you have taken us Lord through 20 in a pestilence year Lord God you have taken us through 2020 in a year that was plagued with illness and we stand before you to say thanks because you have spared us you have kept us under your protection and we are grateful Lord God Lord Father we thank you that even in a famine in Genesis 26 promise you you did it for Isaac and you can do it for us oh Lord God we will see plenty in famine and stress because we serve the God who is the only God you are the one true God Lord Father we thank you Lord Father we pray for your presence in this place that your Holy Spirit will take charge of this entire service we thank you Lord God for the music and for the sharing of your word we thank you for the fellowship we thank you Lord God for the worship oh Lord we bless every aspect now and Lord as we are only a few hours away from 2021 oh Lord we pray Lord we pray that you will rise up from dust till dawn on our behalf in 2021 oh Lord God we pray that you will rise up like a man of war and be our weapon in 2021 Lord we pray every promise will be manifest into a celebration in our lives in our testimony in 2021 we pray Lord God every gifting will be made manifest in a newness in 2021 we pray Lord God that you will be like the strong the, the strong God the, the, the mighty God who is able to bring us through every situation we will face in 2021 we declare you now Lord we declare you now Messiah we declare you now Savior we breathe healing and strength Lord we connect now to the anointing of fresh fire we connect now to the anointing of strength we connect now to the anointing of victory we connect now to the anointing of overcoming we connect now Lord God to you King of Kings and Lord of Lords and we say Lord God let your anointing rest let your divine favor rest on us Lord God as we go brave knowing who we serve that you are King of Kings you are Lord of Lords in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen and Amen
We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. We worship your holy name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise oh, Jesus. bless the Lord at all times and his prayers shall continue. Be in my mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise oh, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. I love that phrase and that song. And it says, with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. Let's wave your hands to the Lord and thank Him today for what He has done for you, what He has done in your home, what He has done in your life today. Hallelujah. 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 No, you know your praise got to be louder under your mouth. Your praise got to be loud and under your mask. So praise the Lord. So if I can't hear you, I can see your hands. Give in praise and honor to God. For he indeed is our good God. We thank the worship team for that time of worship today. And you may have your seats. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we'll have ministry by the deaf. Okay, we're going to invite them at this time. Good night, everyone, both here in, ch in church and watching on YouTube. This, this is the last day of 2020. Soon, soon it will be 2021. For this new year, I want, I want to encourage, to encourage you to read the Bible every day. Understand the Bible more and grow in knowledge of the Bible. Memorize some Bible verses. Continue to pray and develop deeper communication with God. Develop better communication with each other and pray for each other. I encourage you to come to church and sing to God and worship Him. All of us together, both the deaf and the hearing, because we we are all part of the family of God.
Remember people who have need for help with food. You can bring things from the grocery to help the food ministry and to help people who need food. I encourage you to witness to other people. Tell them about Jesus. Also, encourage your friends to come to church so that they can learn more about God. I encourage every family, please try to pray together every day. You must support and encourage each other all all the time. Children, you need to go to school and learn. Learning is important for your future. Children, Obey and respect your parents and your teachers. I also encourage all of us in 2021 to be healthy, eat the right food, and exercise. I pray God's purpose and plan for you in 2021 will come to pass. God bless, God bless you. Amen. We really want to thank Brother Saju at this time. So how we do it? Nice. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. If it's one thing I can tell you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe it's a good time for us to give an offering. We got to offer the Lord something. Hello, it's a good time to give an offering. Amen? Amen? So we'll take them right after the offering. Indeed, God is a good God. God is a good, good, good God. The Lord has blessed us tremendously. Yeah, the Lord has blessed us tremendously and we want to return that blessing today. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your blessings that you have given to us as your children, dear God. And as we give today, we ask you for your good measures that are shaken together and pressed down and running over, dear God, that you will pour out to us, dear God. Father, Lord, we thank you for the jobs that you have provided for us, dear God. We thank you for everything that you have given to us, dear God. Our hearts are filled with gratitude this evening. And we, as we give back, as we give to you today, God, you're going to bless us, dear God. Not just fivefold, not just tenfold, but a hundredfold, dear God. And we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. He has done me well. stand at this time please in a moment of thanksgiving for what the Lord has done for us I want us just to raise our hands what's heaven a spirit of gratitude for the Lord has truly been good to us the Lord has truly been good to us and we just want to thank him today in a spirit of gratitude just keep your hands raised towards the heavens just thank him our situations could have been different it could have been different but for god but for the love of god lord we thank you lord we thank you Lord, we thank you, God, for everything. Oh, God, we thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Let's see if we can get our family going now. Amen. Amen.
Sunday, we could just go. Put them on on Sunday. Okay. The week's family, right after. Right? Good. Amen. 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 But I was just about to introduce my pastor. But my pastor is already here. But our pastor of the Agape Bible Ministries, a lady with a lot of grace. Yeah? A lot of grace. At this time, it gives me privilege. And I want us to put our hands together as we welcome our pastor, Pastor Grace. Philip. Our brother Percy is a most refreshing person. Hallelujah. Uh, we're not hearing any. Yes, we're now hearing something up in front here. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tonight we want to talk about a good report. And so we want to begin in... Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, you know, this year has been a year when so many things have just not worked out. I have a diary in which I plan to stuff. And at the beginning of this year, I wrote down, invite this person, pray for that person, do this now, do... And, you know, after COVID started and the lockdown went into effect, I looked through my diary and just nothing happened. Nothing that we had planned worked out. And sometimes life is like that. We make plans and nothing ever works out. And when that happens in our lives, as it has happened to all of us this year, what do you do? You make sure that you have a good report. Have you found Hebrews 11? It says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen and there were lots of things that we didn't see <laughs> this year and then it says in verse 2 for by it the elders that is those who went before us obtained a good report by faith those who lived in the ages before us obtained a good report what's a good report it's a good testimony. You know, you don't have a testimony until you have a test. And we have had test after test after test. So we must have a good testimony. We must have a good report. And then a good report is also to win God's approval. By faith, we win God's approval. By faith, we distinguish ourselves from the crowd. There are lots of people who are very frustrated. I can't go to the bar, I can't go here, I can't go there, I can't stay out late in the night, I can't stay up all night with my friends online. No, we can't do all that because we are distinguishing ourselves from the crowd. And to have a good report also means to have a good reputation. People know where you're coming from and you're always coming from the same place. You know what I mean? You have a good reputation. All that is having a good report. And we want to look at a few people tonight who had a good report. First of all, we have Enoch's good report. Verse 5, Hebrews 11:5. it says this. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he didn't see death and was not found because God took him. Before he was taken away, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So that when we have faith, 
faith causes us not only to have a good report, but also to please God. And I remember that we began the year with the story of Enoch. Genesis 5 says, Enoch walked steadily and faithfully with God. After he had his son Methuselah, he lived another 300 years, having more sons and daughters. Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked steadily and faithfully with God. And then one day he was simply gone. God took him. Now, that sounds boring. He walked steadily and faithfully with God. And it says it twice. He walked steadily and faithfully with God. And you say, well, boy, he must have had a real boring life. But he didn't, you know. He had, he had Methuselah when he was 65, and then he had many sons and daughters. And if you know anything about many sons and daughters, that is much excitement in life because each son and daughter is doing something totally different and you have to keep your eye on everybody and that's a very exciting life. No, Enoch walked steadily and faithfully with God, but he didn't have a boring life. His life was not at all, you know, I've never seen any trouble. No, 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 that was not Enoch. But still, Enoch walked steadily and faithfully with God. And then Enoch was the first prophet recorded in the Bible. Jude verse 14, Jude only has one chapter. Jude verse 14 says, furthermore, Enoch from the seventh generation after Adam prophesied to them. Who are the them that Enoch prophesied to? Them are the are the crowd from whom God wants us to distinguish ourselves by our faith. So Enoch prophesied to the crowd, but Enoch distinguished himself by his faith. And this is what Enoch said, Jude 14, the second part. The Lord has come with countless thousands of his holy angels. He has come to judge all the people. He has come to convict all the ungodly sinners for all the ungodly things they have done and all the harsh things they have said about God. These people complain, find fault, follow their own desires, say arrogant things, and flatter people in order to take advantage of them. And those are the people from whom we need to distinguish ourselves by our faith in God. So these are all the things that cannot be found in our life. We cannot be complainers. And so you say, well, if something goes wrong, I mustn't say anything. No, you must go and talk to your father or talk to the relevant human authority. But don't, uh, you, you know, have a whole drip, 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 complain, complain, complain. We must not be like that. We must distinguish ourselves from complainers by our faith. We, have, we cannot be fault finders. And you're always doing this. And you're always doing that. And why you must be so? We have to distinguish ourselves from the crowd by being people of faith. They followed their own desires. The Bible tells us that we must find out what God has in mind for us and desire that. If we are to distinguish ourselves from people who walk after their own desires, we have to find out God's desire and walk after that. And then it says, they say arrogant things. I am the great and mighty preacher of the word. Now you will listen to me and to me only. <laughs> When you meet somebody who thinks that much of themselves and has a nice big ego that cannot be popped with a balloon, uh, with a, like a balloon, then you distinguish yourself from such people by walking by faith. And then they flatter people in order to take advantage of them. Have you ever been flattered 
and you say, oh gosh, but this person nicer, they're talking to me nicer. And then you say, but what it is they want me to do for them? What use am I to them? And you can come up with some pretty startling answers because they are flattering you to take advantage of you. Sometimes they take your money. They take all kinds of things from you. When you meet people like that, you know that those are not people of faith and we need to distinguish ourselves from them. So Enoch walked steadily and faithfully with God and he met up all those kinds of people and he distinguished himself from them because he was a man of faith. And then Hebrews 11, 6, you know this one well. I'm sure you learned it in Sunday school. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever comes to God must believe that God is and that God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, I used to hear my husband, Pastor Sam, say quite often, he used to say to people who he saw really serving God, he would say to them, I cannot reward you. I cannot pay you for what you do. But God is a rewarder. When we serve in any capacity, whether it's in church or outside of church, when we serve, we need to look to the Lord for our reward because he is the rewarder. Not only that, but he's the rewarder of those who seek him. Well, I just tell him morning every, every morning and then I just tell him night night when I go into bed. Mm -mm, that's not seeking God. That is telling God morning and good night. He says you must seek him diligently so you can find out what he has in mind for you to do and who he has in mind for you to be. Because if you are not being, then you will never find the doing. You see, we all have to be before we can do. And so this is what's happening here. Without seeking God diligently and fitting in with what he has shown us, we can't please him. So when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, it brings forth these things in us a good testimony god's approval it distinguishes us from the crowd we get a good reputation but you know who we get a good reputation with we get a good reputation with god what's your reputation with god like you ever thought about that how does he regard you does he regard you as somebody who just tell him morning and night or does he regard you as somebody who really goes after him with all your heart? So we get a good reputation with God when we put our faith in Jesus and we pursue God. And then we walk like Enoch, we walk steadily and faithfully with God. And then we please God. Do you please God? Do you know if your life pleases him? You need to find out these things because all these are marks of faith in God. And then another mark of faith in God is that we don't stray. You know, some people, they walk down the center aisle, yes, but then they might say, well, I wonder what it is behind Brother Sherwin chair. And so they wander off the center aisle and then they pass by Sister Sarah and they say, Sister Sarah, have on a nice dress, boy. Oh, but I have to get back in the center. I wonder if Brother David sitting in the center. And oh, I think, I think Sister Savvy sitting in the center too, so I better stick by her. And you know, they drive in all over the place on the right side today and on the left side tomorrow. No, 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 no. But the Lord says that when we walk by faith, we walk purposefully and we walk straight. We don't stray. Proverbs 4.25 says, focus your eyes straight ahead. Keep your gaze on what is in front of you. Watch your feet on the way and all your paths will be secure. Don't deviate. That's a fancy word for drive. Don't drive to the right or to the left. No, no, no. This is your right. To the right or to the left. Turn your feet away from evil. So all those are characteristics of what it means to walk by faith. 
how you're making out. You have a good reputation with God? That's something you need to work on. Do you have a good report with God as the year draws to a close? You know, when, uh, when you go to school, you get a report at the end of the term. When the financial year comes to an end, you have to prepare a financial report to hand in to whoever. There is always a time when you have to give an account to make a report. And this, the end of this year, is the time to make a report. How is your report going to be framed? Can you say, I am a person of faith. I have a good testimony. I have won God's approval. I have distinguished myself from the crowd. I have a good reputation with God. I'm not straying to the right or to the left. Are not driven from the path of faith and my life pleases God you could say all those things and God says every year you have to improve on that you have to improve on how you exercise your faith now let's look at verse 7 Hebrews 11 7 Noah's good report it was faith that made Noah hear God's warning about things in the future that he could not see. He obeyed God and built a boat in which he and his family were saved. As a result, the world was condemned and Noah received from God the righteousness that comes by faith. Mm -hmm. So this tells us another whole set of lovely things about walking by faith. First of all, there's the protection of faith. It was faith that made Noah hear God's warning about things in the future he couldn't see. Now, you say, well, what it was in the future that Noah couldn't see? Well, to tell you the truth, it had never rained before in the earth. It never rained. Mm -mm, never rained. God had made the world so that it didn't need rain. A heavy dew would come down in the night, wet all the plants, and they would flourish in the day. And the day wasn't too hot. So, you know, climate control was going on. We didn't have any climate problems at all. And so Noah and them had never seen rain. And when God said, well, there's going to be a flood, Noah said, well, I don't even know what rain is. What is flood? Noah didn't know what God was talking about. But it was faith that made Noah hear God's warning about things in the future that he couldn't see. God's warning of Noah was Noah's protection. You see, when you seek the Lord diligently, he warns you about things to come. He says, save your money this year. Don't, don't spend on things that are not necessary. Save a little something. And you say, but Lord, why am I save more this year? Because God sees that there's a flood coming in the future you can't see it i can't see it but god is warning us so when you start in the year you you go to the lord and you say lord what am i to do with my money this year and you may hear buy your furniture now or do buy nothing now save a little more ask the lord how to spend your money ask the lord how to apportion your time Ask the Lord how to bring up your children. Ask him these things because he will give you a warning. He'll give you a, he will give you a word to go on like how he gave Noah. So Noah took God seriously, although he didn't know what rain was and he certainly didn't know what flood was. And had Noah not had faith in God, he would have perished in the flood just like everybody else. Now, we all take insurance out, most of us. If you don't have insurance yet, you probably will get some. And insurance is a good thing because it, it saves us from life's unseen hazards. But Noah's insurance protection was acting in faith when God warned him about what was going to come. Even though no one had ever seen or conceived of what rain could be, Noah, even Noah didn't know what rain was, but his faith in God was his protection. 
acting on what God told him was his protection. So how I know if God talking to me? By seeking him. When you seek him often enough, you get accustomed to how he speaks to you. That's all I can say, by experience. Now, the second thing about Noah was that he built an ark to deliver his household. He obeyed God and he built a boat in which his family could be saved. Noah took God seriously. He acted on what God said. And just consider the kind of obstacles that he had. God told him on the 1st of January, year whatever, and then God did not act on what he told Noah to expect for 120 years. And while that was going on, everybody was saying, but what is Noah doing? He, um, what is he building? A building a boat. Why you, why is a boat? Why are you building a boat? Boat is for, boat is for um, river and boat is for sea. Why are you building a boat on dry land? And they went on like that and they said, Noah is a little touched in the head and Noah is crazy. But Noah was not crazy. Noah was exercising his faith in God. Noah was taking God seriously. Noah believed God and obeyed even though what he had been asked to do didn't make any sense. It had never rained a drop up to that point in history. In this way, Noah gave good evidence of his faith by his actions. You know, everybody can see, uh, well, everybody can see who you are by the way you live. Jesus said, by their fruit, you will know them. And you say, well, how, what I have to do? You have to wait until the time for fruit comes. It isn't always the time for fruit. Sometimes the mango tree just have leaves. And you can't judge the mango by the leaves. You have to wait until the mango bear. And you can't judge the mango when the mango little so. You have to wait until it reaches full size and full color. And then you pick it and you wash it and you peel it. And then you find out, but this mango so why? By their fruits, you will know them. You see? So you have to wait until the season for fruits. And that reveals everything. Yep, yep, yep. We give evidence of our faith by our lifestyle and conduct. What does your lifestyle and conduct say about your faith? Third, there is the purity of faith. With Enoch's, with Noah's faith, he criticized the world. Noah criticized the world? Yes. Noah condemned what the other people were doing by building the boat on dry ground where there was no water. And they kept on saying, but what happening? I don't understand this. He building a boat, a very funny looking boat too. Tall, tall, it have a lot of stories. I never hear about nothing like that. Who does build boat on dry ground? But when he did that, the Bible says that he condemned the world. He distinguished himself from the unbelievers by obeying God and building the boat. And all they could say is, no, a little crazy, you know, whoever hear about doing that. And that's what happens when you seek the Lord, say, for your money at the beginning of the year, and the Lord tells you, don't spend up your money this year, you know. Get a savings account and put X in it every time. Just put X in it every time. Just put X in it every time. And everybody else out buying house, land, furniture, curtains, bed, dressing table, everything. But you saving your money. And your friends say, but well, she's stupid, eh? What, why she can't, she can't see the price is good now? And next year they're going up. Why is she not buying now? And then later on, they find out why. We're hearing some music. Is that around church? Or outside? Okay, it's outside. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is that faith purifies us. You know 
how it must have felt for Noah to be building this boat. And everybody else is laughing at him and saying, but what's wrong with him? And all of this time, Noah's heart and his faith was being purified. As he condemned the world, he himself was being purified on the inside. You see, a strong, vibrant faith produces virtue. And virtue uh, pushes out unbelief. Unbelief doesn't produce holiness. Unbelief produces evil. But when God's word says something that is contrary to popular opinion, who are you going to believe? Believing God produces a holy, godly lifestyle. And that is what people are looking for. What are your fruits? And your fruits are seen by your lifestyle. And lifestyle has to be observed over a period of time. That is why Noah walked steadily and faithfully with God. Every day, he was the same person. He only got more and more purified and holy in his outlook and in his lifestyle, but he never deviated from God. He never deviated from building his crazy boat. See what I mean? And then there's the fourth thing. There's the prize of faith. He became heir of the righteousness that comes from faith. Noah received from God the righteousness that comes by faith. You see, when you believe God, God pours out an extra bit of righteousness upon you. Isaiah 61 says he puts his cloak of righteousness around us. And we need that cloak of righteousness. You know why? Because we are always failing and we are always sinning. And so God puts his cloak of righteousness around us so that we can come into his presence just as if we never sinned. And so this is the grand climax of faith. Faith believes God. Faith produces a godly lifestyle. And if you don't have a godly lifestyle, then we know you don't have no faith. By their fruits, you know what I mean. Okay, so then, we're going on to Abraham's good report. Verse 8, Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of, with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know, there are some things that we ask God for and we walk through our whole lives and we don't ever get those prayers answered. And you say, well, how do you keep from being totally disappointed when you don't get all the things you ask God for? This is how you do it. You fix your eyes on a city. It says in verse 10, Abraham waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So, you ask God for the things you would like to have. Many of them he will give you. Some of them he won't give you. And when that happens, the bottom does not fall out of your life. What happens is that because you have placed your focus on the Lord, that prevents the bottom from falling out of your life. All of us either have been or will be in places where we get so disappointed that the bottom falls out of our life and we don't know how to handle things. The way we get through that is by keeping our focus on the city that God is building for us. You see? And this is what happened with Abraham. God made Abraham certain promises and Abraham never saw them come to pass. Isaac, his son, didn't see them come to pass. Jacob, his grandson, didn't see them come to pass. 
But they came to pass when Jesus came. Look how long afterwards that was. That was 28 generations. No, no, no. That was Adam. It was at least 20 generations later when Jesus came and God brought some of those promises to pass, which he had made to Abraham. You think you could manage that kind of long-term faith? You have to, because it is not everything that you want that you're going to get. It's not everything you ask God for that's going to come to pass in your lifetime. They may come to pass in your children's lifetime, or your grandchildren's lifetime, or your great-grandchildren's lifetime. Does that mean the bottom is going to fall out of your world? No. It means that you're going to fix your eyes on the Lord and know that when the right time comes, he is going to bring this thing to pass. So how did Abraham do it? The answer is that he set his heart on God's city. God had promised him that he would, he would give him a whole country for him and his descendants to live in. And Abraham walked through the whole of the promised land and Abraham never settled down. You, know, you notice they said he dwelt in tents with Isaac and Jacob. You know what dwelling in a tent means? They didn't build no house. When you're settling down, it is build house. You see what I mean? They didn't build no house. And yet it was the promised land, the land that was promised to them. But that didn't happen until several generations later. But did Abraham uh, lose his faith and say, well, God is not faithful and God is not there? No, 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 he didn't do that. He fixed his eyes on God's city, the city whose foundations and builder and maker is God. God is the architect of our eternal destination and he is the architect of the natural opportunities that come to us in life. When we seek God with all our heart, what happens is that he opens doors for us. He opens the doors that are right for us at the right time. As I tell you, I had a diary and there were many things I had planned for this year. Many things we had planned to do in church. I could tell you a few of them, but you know, they didn't happen, so what's the point? <laughs> many, many things we had planned. Not one came to pass and it's the end of the year and we have to think about what our report is going to be like. And are we going to say, well, God failed us? No, we could have got COVID and died. And then none of us would be here tonight. <laughs> God has been faithful. Yes, he has been faithful. We didn't get all the things we planned, but that doesn't mean God isn't faithful. God has kept us. And I know some people who have had COVID and they've got through it. And they're still with us in the land of the living. And we're glad for ha for have, to have them still. God has been very faithful. He is the one who opens the doors for us. And he's also the one who shuts the doors so we don't go through them. Because God knows that some of the doors we would like opened in front of us, not going to get us in the right place where we can seek him and have a good reputation with him. The Apostle Paul uh, explains it to us like this. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. It says this, For our present troubles are small. And this is Paul writing. And Paul got beaten. He got stoned. He got shipwrecked. He had all kinds of troubles. And he says, Our present troubles are small. I haven't been beaten. I haven't been stoned. And I haven't been shipwrecked. And yet the man who had all these things happen to him is saying, our present troubles are small and they don't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory, a glorious report that, is, that vastly outweighs these small, petty present troubles. And this glory, this glorious report will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can now see. Rather, we do like Abraham. We fix our eyes on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see 
will last forever. So what's going to last forever for you? The main things that last forever are people. You ever thought about that? It's the people who last forever. When we come close to people and we come close to the Lord, he lasts forever. People last forever. That's why we have to make our investment in people. You see what I mean? It's the people who last forever. And it is God who lasts forever. So we have to do like Abraham and fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. One day COVID might go too. Although they say that, that it will be with us for the rest of our lives. But the things we cannot see will last forever. And you say, but people are not, e people are not eternal. They die. And I'm seeing them, so they can't be eternal. But you see, all you are seeing is my house. What you are seeing is my house. This is where I live now. I need this human house, this body, so that I can be a resident of the earth. There are lots of beings in the universe who would like to come and live in the earth, but they don't have a body. <laughs> but we have bodies, and that's why we live here. But this is just my house. One day I'm going to drop the house, but I am not going to cease to be because I am eternal. So are you. And this is where we make our investment in people. So how are we going to handle the new year? Luke chapter 12 tells us this. Jesus is speaking to us. He says, Luke 12 from verse 35, he says this. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. And you say, what is that? How does gird my waist? It means be ready for whatever comes. Be dressed for action with your lamps burning. What does that mean? Does it mean that I must put on my Sunday clothes every day? No, it, has, it doesn't have too much to do with what you wear on your house, how you paint your house. See, this is just the painting on my house. But what it means is that I must be ready on the inside for anything that comes. Oh Lord, so that means I must look forward and think, it's going to flood tomorrow, the lightning going to strike me tomorrow, all the bad things are going to happen tomorrow. No, but you have to be ready so that when the Lord says, talk to this one about Jesus. You remember our brother Saju was just telling us that as he uh, spoke to us with his hands and he said you must be ready to speak the Apostle Peter says always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you why you are so full of hope and you know if you are full of hope you are an odd kind of person these days a lot of people have no hope they just getting up and living and going to work and mining their children and then they come back home and they go to sleep and they get up in the morning and they go to work and they mind their children and then they come home and that's how they live but there is no hope inside of them and you see if you are a hopeful person who is walking by faith you are an oddity in the world and so Jesus says, this is how you've got to live. Be ready for whatever comes. So if the flood comes, you're okay. It washes away your house. I have a problem. I sit down, I cry, I get up, and I walk with Jesus again. Because I'm ready for whatever happens. So you just cry? Sure. Nope. I mean, what do you have tears for if you don't, if you don't have to cry? So you think bad things happen you sit down you cry you tell the Lord you get up you walk with Jesus again you have to be ready for whatever happens you have to be dressed on the inside for action and then Luke 12 36 says and you yourselves be like servants who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks they may open to him immediately and you say, well, what is that? Well, we have to be ready because Jesus is coming. 
But them saying that for the past 2,000 years and Jesus ain't come yet. Jesus coming, eh? That is all I know. He never tell us he coming in 19 this or 20 that or 22 that. He never told us a date. He said, live like if I'm coming. Live like if I'm coming. And you say, but why I must do that? That trouble. That, that requires too much thought and thing. I, I have energy for that. You need to do that because the coming of Jesus is what puts hope in us. It's what makes life worth living when everything falls apart in your life. Jesus is coming. Well, so Jesus coming? I don't know when he coming now. But the point is that when you take on board in your thinking, Jesus is coming and I've got to live like if that is going to happen imminently, it puts a certain bounce in my step that I don't have if I don't know that Jesus is coming. Verse 37, blessed are those servants whom the master when he comes will find watching. And you say, well, what do, what do you have to watch for? What, what, do, what this watching is? And it means this. Blessed? I don't blessed. Whenever they ask me, how are you? I say, I am blessed. But I really don't know what it means, you know. It's just something I just say. <laughs> I've met a few people like that. <laughs> but blessed means happy and to be envied. Who envied me? If you are blessed, you are to be envied. Blessed, happy, and envied are those servants. Me and nobody servant. Are you walking by faith in Jesus? Then part of that means that you are his servant. Me and nobody order me wrong. Nobody ain't gonna tell me nothing. If you are walking by faith in Jesus, you are his servant, and he has the right to order you. Hmm. I am so sure about this servant thing, you know. But blessed, happy, and to be envied are those who consider themselves servants, let's put it that way, whom the master, that is Jesus, when he comes, will find watching. What is watching? Watching means awake and ready. It's the same thing about ready for action, ready for anything that happens. You are prepared in your inner person for whatever happens. If good happens, you praise God. If bad happens, you praise God. But I thought bad things didn't happen to good people. Sorry, if you believe that, soon you'll find out that's not a fact. So you have to be, you have to be in, a, in a watching and in a ready frame of mind. And then Jesus says, Assuredly, I say that the master will put on his servant apron and have his servants sit down and eat and he will come and serve them himself. And he'll come and serve them himself because he's so pleased with their faith and with their hope. Verse 38. And if he should come in the second watch of the night, that's at midnight, or in the third watch, that is for the morning and find them awake and ready blessed happy and to be envied are those servants hallelujah are you facing the new year like that are you finishing the old year like that when you live like that when you follow what jesus says in his uh in his instructions for living you are full of faith you are a hopeful person, you are a purposeful person, and your life has meaning, and you're heading towards the same city as Abraham, whose builder and maker is God. Luke 12, 39. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Hmm. Jesus is coming. And he's going to come when we least expect. It's like COVID. 
we made all our plans for this year and then bam 15th of march stay in your house and don't come out where life gone i can't see my friends well yes you could see them if you go on facetime and skype and zoom and all them things but i want to see them i want to see them like how i are seeing you you know in person up close i want to be able to hug them and kiss them but you can't do that that's now off limits where my life gone jesus says be ready for action always full of faith full of hope because god's purpose is still being worked out even though you lock up in your house and you and the only place you could go is the drugstore and the grocery <laughs> what a thing eh? who would ever have thought we would have landed up like that <laughs> but you must be ready you must be ready when jesus comes to make his report about you will his report say so and so was ready ready means ready for life whether it throws good things at you or rather whether it throws rotten eggs at you life is going to throw rotten eggs at you at some point so are you going to lie down and die then no you're going to get up and do like enoch and abraham and you're going to fix your eyes focus on the long story instead of on the rotten eggs of today and you're going to get full of faith and hope because God is still at work and Jesus is coming. He has said he come in in my lifetime, but I have to live like if he come in. I have to live like if before 2021 come, he come in. You ready for that kind of action? It is a mindset. You know, when I was young, I must tell you that I am right now old. But when I was young, I was very depressed. I just lived in the world of depression. I wasn't happy about anything. And then I got to know Jesus, and I was still a bit depressed, and I still didn't know how to handle life properly. And you say, how oh, you start off so? I started off so because that's how my family was. I, I inherited through my genes all the depression that came through my family line. Maybe you are like that too. You know, you have more depression than you have bad stories about. And if you're more depressed than you have bad stories, then you probably inherited your depression. So the Lord began to deliver me from that a little at a time. And God does not deliver you in a hurry. You know why? Because he says, you have to be able to handle your freedom. So if you can't handle it, he can't deliver you from the next step. So you're going to come out of it gradually. It took me several years to come out of it. But you know what I learned? I learned that part of the deliverance was reprogramming my mind so that I didn't think the kinds of thoughts I used to think. There were certain books I used to love to read, certain kinds of literature. There was a book by Thomas Hardy called Jude the Obscure. If you want to be depressed, read Jude the Obscure. I loved Jude the Obscure. He took me to places of depression that nothing else could do. And I realized I can't be reading that kind of foolishness again. I have to be reading stuff that takes me to Jesus. I have to put my eyes on the city that God is building and has foundations in the Lord. I needed to change the way I thought. So the other day, somebody, somebody sitting here asked me, so what do you just call how you think now? And I said, the way I think now is, um, how do I think now? It is practiced optimism. So what is that? It is this, I have practiced how to think like God. You see, God is not a pessimist and God does not get depressed. God don't get depressed? Never. <laughs> Can you imagine such a thing? God never gets depressed. And so I have learned that the way to live purposefully with faith and hope is to practice God's style of optimism. And so that's how I live now. 
You know, if I wasn't living so long time, when my husband died, I would have died too. I mean, literally died too, because I figured I couldn't live without him. And I found a living, and I'm flourishing, and I'm going forward with my life. And I've, I have the same faith, and I have more hope than I used to have, because I have practiced the optimism of God. God is not a pessimist. God is an optimist, and he's always looking with faith and hope into the future. Of course, he knows the whole story already, so he knows everything. But you know, if you're going to face the new year with faith that pleases God, you're going to have to practice optimism. You're going to have to dig in the word of God, find out how God thinks, and learn to think like God. But I too much trouble. Well, then stay depressed. Anything that's worthwhile takes effort. One very good resolution you should make and keep at midnight in the next three and a half hours is I will practice God's kind of thinking. I will become an optimist in the God style. Now I could become a foolish optimist and, and say, oh, everything I desire will happen and then my life falls apart when it doesn't happen. But no, I'm practicing the God style of optimism. I dig up in his word, find out how he thinks, and I begin to think like that. And then that keeps me. COVID come and I get a little knock, but then I straighten up because I'm walking by faith with, filled with the hope of God. And that is how you have to face the new year. This is a promise that the Lord gave me about myself and Agape. Exodus 19, 5. If you will listen obediently. Now, notice it says if you will listen obediently. That means listen with positive action. If you will listen obediently to what I say, this is God speaking to me, and keep my covenant. What is that? A covenant is a group of promises that God has made to us. And I have to keep the promises. I, I have to walk in the promises that God has made for me. He says, out of all peoples, you will be my most precious treasure. Hmm, that's lovely, eh? That's lovely. The whole earth is mine to choose from, he says. But agape is special. I want you to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That sounds boring. No, it is, it is practiced optimism. It is full of faith and full of hope. And it takes us forward with God. And that's how God wants us to be. This is a declaration that I make every day. I declare that the Lord Jesus Christ, our warring Prince of Peace. What that mean? I have been told that the Prince of Peace, peace does not come without war. So in order for him to be Prince of Peace, especially in your life, he has to make war on all that stands against his peace inside of you. And there are many things on the insides of human beings that stand against peace. All kind of turmoil and confusion going on inside there. And in order for Jesus to establish his peace in us, he's got to make war on all that turmoil and confusion and throw it out. And then the Prince of Peace comes to dwell there. So there's no peace without war. <laughs> so when we talk about the Prince of Peace, he is a warring Prince of Peace, you see? So this is my declaration. I declare that the Lord Jesus Christ, our warring Prince of Peace, makes war against and destroys the authority of COVID-19, lawlessness, racism, and gambling in Trinidad and Tobago. How come you praying about Trinidad and Tobago? Because that's what I have to do. That's part of what God has called me to do. I got to pray for this nation. This is where I live. This is where I born. This is where I grow up. This is where I belong. 
I got to pray. You got to pray. So let me tell you what I pray again. I declare that the Lord Jesus Christ, our warring prince of peace, makes war against and destroys the authority of COVID-19, lawlessness, racism, and gambling in Trinidad and Tobago. I have never seen people who like to gamble like people in this country. Oh my Lord, tell them, put in $10 and you can get out 10,000 and they ride there with the $10. And that is gambling. <laughs> And we are just absorbed in that. And all that does is lead to poverty. The people who come and present those kinds of opportunities to you are doing what um, we read about earlier. They are flattering you to, get, to take advantage of you. <laughs> you see what I mean? So that's what I pray. And then I say, I declare that because we love the Lord, he is turning this curse of COVID-19 into a blessing in our lives and in our church. So COVID-19 going to be a blessing for us? Yes. I pray and so you need to get started doing it too. If you haven't started yet, get started praying. And then I say, I declare that COVID-19, lawlessness, but we lawless? Oh man, we lawless. Just look at how we drive, especially around Christmas and Carnival. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Just coming down here tonight, there was a guy doing this on the highway and everybody else, but, 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 but at about 80 and he going shh, 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 120 and he going down the road that's lawlessness he's putting his own life at risk and the lives of all the other people driving on the road at risk that's lawlessness not only that but he go exceeding the speed limit i must confess i used to do that a lot but we are moving right along i have learned wisdom <laughs> i declare that covid 19 lawlessness racism and gambling are boomeranging back on the head of the enemy jesus christ is king of kings and lord of lords hallelujah you just pray like that it takes faith it takes hope to pray like that and for when the when the thought comes back what were you doing that for nothing ego change I don't care. I pray and God will change it. He will change it how he want and when he want and where he want. That ain't my business. My business is to pray. So come, get up and shout with me. I'll give you the words. You got to shout. Now don't say, I declare that the Lord Jesus Christ, our Warren Prince of Peace. Nah! Get your voice out. Get ready for action. Put on your, your uh, practiced optimism. Get talking like God. Say, thank you, Jesus. Not good enough. You ain't ready for war yet. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, now we get in there. So say after me or oh, and mean it when you say it. I declare that the Lord Jesus Christ, our warring prince of peace, makes war against and destroys the authority of COVID-19, lawlessness, racism, and gambling in Trinidad and Tobago. I declare that because we love the Lord, he is turning this curse of COVID-19 into a blessing in our church and in our lives. I declare that COVID-19, lawlessness, racism, gambling are boomeranging back on the head of the enemy. Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A rembe di kaka chambaba shekendi baba ha. O rembe di kanaba konde behida bohuk homba mbole beni poshkaraba. This is my report for 2020. What is yours? Debs, can we sing a song, love? Or Liz, or whoever? Thank you. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Can we have it in F? Hallelujah. I can stay here all night, but I need to go, huh? So could you be seated just for a short moment? Thank you very much, Pastor Grace, for that word. Very inspiring word. And may I say that in that word, 
I am happy tonight and better for it. It interfered with some of my theology. But God is a good God. And we need to trust him even where we can't trace him. Yeah? We need to trust God. One of the things I remember tonight when Sister Grace started is talking about all these plans. She had written plans from January to December. Plans that she now can't remember because they didn't come to nothing. And that is what we do. We write down things. We have things placed because what we're going to do. And nobody know. For me, this 2020 was the most exciting time in my life because I was going to be a pensioner officially. I was turning 60, plan a cruise. I was going on a cruise. Hmm? I planned three different parties in three different spaces. One home in Trinidad, one home in Barbados, and one home in New York. Mm -hmm. I was ready, I write down. But thank God tonight, I ain't lie down. Thank God tonight, I am here. I've missed a lot of my friends and some family members who died. But I am here. And that is why I give God praise. So if I am loud, it's not because I want to be. It's because I'm alive and well. Yeah? Indeed, God is a good God. We thank you tonight for joining us in this service. And I know that you were planning and you was writing down what you were going to do after service tonight. And we kind of interfere with that a little bit, huh? if I may say. So we have a time of prayer all night, starting at 10 and ending at 8. And we are praying there are a lot of different things that we are praying for. We'll be on Zoom all night. So I know that he was planning for fireworks sometime be between 11 and 12 and 12 and 1. But that is time for personal reflection on the goodness of God and the mercy that he has extended to us. Because we planned so much for it last year, we see enough sparkles. And then our lamps and our sparkles became strangely dim. But God is a good God. And we thank him tonight for his goodness. So I do thank you tonight for blessing us with that word. That was the first part of the sermon. And anything inside of that that I remember is that how we need to speak to each other. How we need each other. It's about people, as Sister Grace says. It's about people. I love people. All right? It's about people. This COVID is not doing me very well. I, well, all you know, that is a hug up and kiss everybody. I just want to hug up everybody. So I've been telling some people I have to be very careful with the protocol because I say I am safe, that means I am safe. But it is not doing me too well. But it's to know what we need to know so that in times like these, we need to know that our anchor holds and grips that solid rock that is Jesus. Bless you tonight, worship team. Bless you tonight, musicians. You'll be blessed on Sunday. So if you want something extremely special, I'm going to make sure that it happens right, is that the Weeks family will join us on Sunday. I don't know if I can get them to play from the start to the end. But they will join us on Sunday, so we'll be hearing from the Weeks family on Sunday. You continue to look at your phones and listen to the announcement for the rest of things that we are going to be doing. We still, people are still... So as you talk about it, need food. So we're not going to stop. We will continue to feed. And you know all the things that we do concerning that. We bless you tonight. We thank you tonight. Technicians, we thank you. And we are praying for you. In the midst of this storm, we are praying for you. And we want to thank each person that, and all the different ministries. We'll be hearing some more about that on Sundays. On Sunday, that went through this entire year, the Daughters of Zion and the men that was praying and the Christian Education and the school department and all the other ministries and the care ministry and the people who see about the church and people who see about the car park and everything. We want to thank, hey, we just love everybody. I know online on Sunday I was listening to this church is a Bethlehem church. Are correct? Yes, minister. A Bethlehem church. 
and it means that a church that you feel comforted and a church that you feel welcome and a church that you want to be. So if you're here tonight, you've never been here before, I want you to just wave your hand, I want to see you. Anybody in here for the first time? Bless you, you and your family, yeah? Bless you. Wave your hand again, only just look and see which is not. Just look, well, that's a special guy. Anybody else? I don't want to miss you, you know? So bless you for being here, and some of you didn't come for a very long time. Welcome, welcome home. Blessings upon you. Brother Sherwin will take us home, and as he comes, as we leave, I also want to cover over you this Ephesian prayer. So let us stand as we welcome Brother Sherwin. Now to him that is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this as we come to close off the year 2020. Father, we thank you, God, for taking us through, God, this year in the midst of troubles and turmoils. Father, you have been good to us. As a matter of fact, Father, you have been more than good to us. You have provided for us. You have protected us. You clothed us, and Father, most of all, O oh God, you gave us your saving grace each day. And so, Father, as we are about to enter 2021, we declare your word that you said to us that you are Emmanuel, God with us. And Father, if you are with us, we know that you will take us through 2021. Because, Lord, you are going before us and whatever we may face, we know with you, we are an unbeatable team. And so, Father, we thank you that though we may face different trials and tribulations, though we may go through different battles, you said the battle is yours and the victory is ours. So we thank you, God, that we would be able to live a victorious life in you because our hope is in you, our faith is in you, and our trust is in you. And Father, we thank you, God, that as we go through this year, Father, this new year that we are about to enter, that you would help us every step of the way. Father, we thank you, God, for your goodness and mercies that are new to us each day. And so, Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would help us to be a people, oh God, who would be on fire for you, who our love would grow deeper for you, and that we would be able, O oh God, to do the things that you would have us to do. Father, many times we ask you for things that we want you to do for us. But Lord, as we enter the new year, we ask, O oh God, what do you want us to do for you? And so, Lord, we enter into this year, new year with great anticipation, knowing, O oh God, that you are there for us, and knowing, O oh God, that you are the one, O oh God, who is in control and in charge. And so as you continue to be with us father and we continue to grow in you and as we draw near to you we ask oh god that you will draw near to us and so father we give you praise and we give you thanks tonight Father, as we leave this place we ask that you take us to our homes in safety i declare oh god that the lord bless us and keep us the lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us the lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace god bless you and go in victory. Amen. I just want to wish you a happy new year. Debs?
bless the Lord.